Hello YouTube. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Virtual Holocaust for featuring me on his video. Much love. I'd also like to respond to some of the responses that I've gotten about that video. Okay, yes, I haven't actually seen Expelled. Um, that's why, by the way, I mentioned it at the start of my video. But I have seen a few trailers and I have seen a few interviews about it, quite, quite a lot of media relating to it. Um, so they could be talking about something completely different and I wouldn't know. Um, however, I will accept your criticism, so I'm not going to discuss the film, but instead discuss why intelligent design cannot and will never be a science. The first important distinction I think we need to make is between free speech and the scientific method. They're not interchangeable. You can say and you can believe whatever you want, but that does not make it science. I hope that definition is clear. So why is intelligent design not a science? Well, um, first off, it makes claims about the supernatural world or the transcendent. Uh, an intelligent agent is somehow beyond the realms of observation. Um, now dualism fails because if we have the material world and the spiritual world, and the spiritual world can come down and interfere with the material world. It can also be observed by the material world. Um, so dualism is n not an easy perspective to defend. Um, and furthermore, science isn't even concerned with the spiritual world, regardless of whether it exists or not. Science concerns itself with the material world. This leads um, science to form models and hypotheses about how the universe works. So, for example, we can um, model certain elements of atomic theory and try to use it to explore novel properties of um, chemistry. We can see if our uh, models uh, are explained by our observations and we can compare the two. Now, the same can be said of genetic algorithms. We can use genetic algorithms, um, the same process of evolution, it's an analogy more than anything, and we can see how it can create um, individuals which are more suited and more fit to their environment uh, to propagate. Um, however, I was going to compare the computational efficiency of genetic algorithms and the intelligent design theory, and then I figured quite hard for me to do that because I sat down and tried to do it and then I realized there's no way I would ever possibly be able to program in um, an intelligent design algorithm. If any of you intelligent design proponents out there want to suggest and submit the code then I'm sure you would enlighten not just the computing community but the entire scientific community at large because intelligent design has not put forth any mechanisms in which this operates. It has no hypothesis. Um, furthermore, were it to have a hypothesis, Occ Occam's razor would dismiss um, the hypothesis because when we have two conflicting uh, scientific theories, which are both supported by the evidence, we should always go for the simplest one. This is because there's less room for error in the theory, etc. And a natural explanation will always trump a supernatural explanation for the reasons I've just mentioned. But regardless, were we to have a physical explanation of this phenomenon, be it um, extraterrestrial beings coming down and tweaking our DNA at every macro step of the way, then um, it would still be a far more complex theory with more room for error than the theory of evolution, which of course only has three principles. Um, another tool employed by the intelligent design community is the argument from ignorance. Now, I'm not just talking about the ignorance that some of them demonstrate when they confuse evolution with the origin of life, which is of course abiogenesis. Um, I'm talking about the argument from ignorance within the scientific community generally. Okay, so say for example the irreducible complexity argument um, suggest that you know some things are just irreducibly complex um, regardless of 
the fact that every time the ID community has posted this, the scientific community has actually hit back and produced evidence uh, uh, suggesting how it's not irreducibly complex. Um, that's not the point. Just because we don't have an explanation for something at the present moment doesn't mean that it's false. There are many things we don't know in physics, like dark matter, for example. We just don't know where it is or what it is. But that doesn't mean that Einstein's general theory of relativity is wrong. Not at all. Um, but perhaps this is because people writing 2,000 years ago in the Bronze Age didn't write about such things because they had no idea of what contemporary physics was. Another thing that is beginning to slightly sicken me is the constant use and reference to Nazism and uh, Soviet Russia. I mean, I'll probably accept that evolutionary theory in some sense might have influenced the, this because it certainly played a large part in developing Freudian theory and the psychometrics and probably psychology as a whole, so I, it has you know, changed human culture somewhat. But just because something might have unethical consequences doesn't mean that it's false either. Let's take, for example, the atomic bomb. That is arguably one of the most unethical objects in existence, which actually came from Einstein's E equals MC squared. It does not refute E equals MC squared at all. So to apply the same logic to um, evolution is, is just absurd, really. And finally, there's a lot of discussion about the intelligent design movement. It's, it's largely focused on getting it into schools, getting it taught by schools, um, and it's you know, revolved quite a lot around free speech. But it's not the job of 15-year-old American high school students to decide between intelligent design and creationism, especially when they might be um, told a very unobjective viewpoint on this. And there is a complete misrepresentation of science. I'll say it again, Ben Stein thinks evolution is lightning striking a mud puddle. It's no wonder um, there's, there's a large uh, majority of Americans who are now beginning to dismiss the theory they're being presented inaccurate um, and unfair representations of the theory. Science doesn't just happen in the classroom, it happens at research uh, in research and it happens at universities. It's what we base our technology on. Now evolution um, has helped us to come up with a large part of modern medicine as well as of course, like I said, the evolutionary algorithm being very effective in industry. What could we possibly gain from researching intelligent design? All the research has been done already. Am I not wrong? Um, we wouldn't be able to further human knowledge in any way through this, and that's why I oppose it. Peace.